little reflection on uh, Jermel Charlo's victory over Castaño to capture the undisputed title at 154, man. Uh, you know, what did you learn from uh, Jermel in that uh, rematch fight? Oh, man, I think it was more about Castaño and his corner and his trainers. I mean, because they kept dwelling on the first fight opposed to moving forward to fighting him now. The advantage we have was that they thought that they faced the best version of Errol, I mean, of Jamel Charlo. And so that's what they thought. And so that's what they held on to. And that's what they, they hugged it and they nurtured it. So in his mind, he kept talking about the first fight and the press conference, the first fight. No, man, talk about this fight. So he couldn't move past that first time because he forgot those last four rounds when he was running for his dear life. And how much stronger, you know, how much stronger Jamel was than he was. See, they talked him into that. I tell my guys the truth is going to be tough, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. It's coming at you, right? And then when he got in there, he, he was real, oh, I forgot. He could punch really hard. So I think that he, they, 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 they kind of conned him out of his victory. They talked him out of it. So, I mean, that's what I really learned. I saw it. I was like, I kept hearing interviews like, the first fight, I'm like, hey, we're just not fighting the first fight again. So it, it, what the trainer was saying, the father, and the guy, so they all were so keen on that that they couldn't live in the present because they were so caught in the past. And they forgot, like, he was the one in the ring. He was the one running in those last four rounds. So he was the one that's barely surviving. So what happened is they convinced him so much of that that he forgot about that. So it wasn't necessarily uh, anything that Jermel did. Uh, you feel like just he had to stay right? Well, Jermel did too, but I'm just not going to talk about it. Okay. But I'm just talking about, but really that was, that played the, that was the biggest, that was the biggest card. I mean, as long as you're living in the past, how can you deal with today? You can't deal with today. And that's really what it was. He couldn't deal. He was reminded when he was in the ring. And he, I mean, he, he basically succumbed to it, boom, a punch to hit, hit, hook to hit him in the head. I mean, he can't hit with a lot of shots. But um, Jamel looked great, and he came out there. He was focused, and he, uh, you know, he listened. And um, that was like the key to the event, to the, to the, to everything is that he listened. Good deal. What's next for Jamel? Well, who would you like to see him fight? Um, the the towering inferno is the guy who's been uh, calling for that fight. And um, does it bug you? I mean, you're a guy who's gotten plenty of accolades as well as Arrow. That uh, Jamel is not even on the pound for pound list. You know, undisputed champion. I just said, how can Canelo be on on this pound for pound list? How can Lomachenko be on there? With losses, so see, to see, the think about like this. What, what is the basis or the premise of the pound for pound list? Well, what it is is that they said these guys are so good that if they fought in any weight division, they will be champs. But so that means that Canelo reached light heavyweight, right? So that means that that was his limit. So he can't be on the list because he lost. He Then Lomachenko lost, what, three years ago, two years ago? So how could he be on the list? I mean, if because if, he met his limit. His skill set is phenomenal, but if he gets up to whatever weight it was or whatever, whoever the fight, he lost to a guy in his weight division, so he didn't even try to move up. So he can't be on the list. So see, those are two of Jamel Charlo's spots because Jamel's undisputed. Neither like Canelo's undisputed because he didn't put up the other the other belts, but that Lomachenko is like beltless. So in, in your opinion, it doesn't really make sense, man. It's not my opinion, it's the truth. From a mythical, see, the, the pound for pound is a mythical idea, right? And mythically, if a fighter fights, if he's so good he fights a light heavyweight, cruiserweight, heavyweight, 130, he could be champ. That's what that means. Well, Canelo met his match at 175. He should, no, he should not be on there because he's not, he's not, he's not list worthy anymore because he, Man, he's not, it's not mythical anymore. Everybody else is mythical because they haven't fought anybody to beat them, right? So they still can be hypothetical, but his is actual. He met his match at 175, so he shouldn't be on the list. Good deal, um, Derek, and w w what's your take on that potential fight, Jermel taking on the towering Inferno? I think that he has, I think somebody else is in front of him now. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know, I mean, I mean, it's a fighter, I mean, I think that the guy's a good fighter. I never really watched him. Yet, I like haven't looked at him. I, I think I've seen him fight once. I mean, but until it's like time to fight, that's when I watch the videos. That's when I really watch him and study him. So, I mean, I think he's been great.
Good deal. Thanks, Derek. God bless you. See you on Saturday.